Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the permanent mandibular lateral incisor. So what we are going to discuss in this brief video lecture, we are going to discuss the timeline or the chronology of development of the mandibular lateral incisor. So we, all, we will also discuss what is the number of this tooth in different tooth notation systems and we will discuss the important identification points or the landmarks that are present on the mandibular lateral incisor. So watch this video till the end. So the timeline or the chronology of development, the mandibular lateral incisor, the calcification or the formation of the hard tissue of the crown, it starts at the age of three to four months. The crown is completed by the age of four to five years and the tooth it emerges into the oral cavity or it appears in the, into the oral cavity by the age of seven to eight years. And when the tooth emerges into the oral cavity, only two thirds of the root is formed. The remaining root it takes around two years. So if you add plus two, then it becomes ten. So by the age of 10 years, the root formation is completed. So what is the number of this tooth in different tooth notation system? So in the universal numbering system, the number of the lateral incisor, this is the midline. This is the central incisor and the second one is the lateral incisor. So this is the lateral incisor of the right of the left side. And this is the lateral incisor of the right side. So for the right for the right side, the number is 26. And for the left side, the number is 23. 23 and 26 in the universal notation system. Now in the Palmer notation system, the number of this tooth is 2 and 2. But for the right for the left side, you have to draw this symbol and two. For the right side, this, this is two. Now in the FDI notation system, uh, known as the Federation Dentar International Numbering System, the number of this tooth for the left mandibular lateral incisor, the number of the tooth is three, two. And for the right mandibular lateral incisor, the number is 42. It's not 42, it's 42. 4 means the quadrant number and 2 means the number of the tooth. The mandibular lateral incisor is the second tooth from the midline. So this is the clinical picture showing the mandibular incisors. So this is the midline. And these first teeth are the central incisor. So, and this is the lateral incisor. So, lateral incisor is the second tooth from the midline. And here, this is the lateral incisor. The lateral incisors on each side, they are contact. On the mesial side, they are contact with the central incisor. And on the distal side, they are in contact with the canine. The lateral incisors, this is a lateral incisor. The lateral incisors, they are larger than the mandibular central incisors. And the reverse is true for the maxillary incisor in which the lateral is smaller as compared to the maxillary central incisor. So from the labial aspect, the labial surface of the crown, it is smooth and there are very faint developmental depressions or developmental lines near the incisal surface and near the cervical third of the crown. Otherwise, the labial surface of the crown is smooth. The incisal ridge, it is slightly tilted towards the, towards the distal side or there's a slope from mesial to the distal side. The distal outline of the crown is shorter as compared to the mesial outline because of the slope the distal outline it is shorter as compared to the mesial outline so the mesial outline it is more larger as compared to the distal outline so this is the mesial side then and so again sorry <laughs> 
So the distal outline, it is shorter as compared to the mesial outline. This is the incisal surface. So the mesioincisal angle, it is slightly rounded. While if you see the distal, distal incisal angle, this is the distal incisal angle and this distal incisal angle, it is more rounded. Now, from the lingual aspect, the mesial marginal ridge, it is longer than the distal marginal ridge. So, this is the mesial surface and this is the distal surface. So, the mesial marginal ridge, this is the mesial marginal ridge. This ridge is the mesial marginal ridge. So, and this ridge is the distal marginal ridge. So the mesial marginal ridge it is longer because of this slope of the incisal ridge towards the distal surface, the distal marginal ridge automatically become shorter. So in the literal incisor, the mesial and the distal marginal ridges, they are more prominent if you compare it with the central incisor marginal ridges. The cingulum of the lateral incisor, it is a little larger if you compare it with the cingulum of the central incisor. Because of these prominent marginal ridges and the cingulum, the lingual fossa, it automatically become more deeper as compared to the adjacent mandibular central incisor. So the mesial aspect, the mesial side of the crown is longer than the distal side. So this is the crown from the mesial side. So it appears longer and from the mesial side because the height of the crown, it is more on the mesial side. So this is the curvature of the cervical line. And as a general rule, the mesial cervical line curvature, it is greater as compared to the distal side of the same tooth. Now, from the distal aspect, the cervical line curvature, it is slightly less if you compare it with the cervical line curvature that is present on the mesial side. The developmental root depression, there is a developmental root depression over here on the root surface. On the root surface, and this developmental depression, it is more pronounced. So this developmental depression, it is more pronounced over here. Uh, in fact, from the distal aspect, the crown, it appeared more thicker as compared to that from the mesial side because of presence of the slope, incisal surface slope. The crown, it appears more bulky from the distal aspect. Now, from the incisal aspect, the crown it appears broader labiolingually than mesiodistally. So, this is a crown from the incisal aspect. So, the crown of the lateral mandibular lateral incisor it appears broader labiolingually as compared to the mesiodistal dimensions. As compared to the mesiodistal dimensions. So, Again, so the labiolingual dimensions, it is more as compared to the mesiodistal dimensions. So the incisal ridge, this is the incisal ridge of the mandibular lateral incisor. So in the mandibular lateral incisor, the incisal ridge, it follows the curvature of the dental arch. And you know that the dental arch is U-shaped. That's why it, it, there's a slight curvature from the mesial towards the distal side and unlike the mandibular central incisor, the incisal ridge of the lateral incisor is not straight. The cingulum, this is the cingulum and it appears slightly displaced and more displaced towards the distal side. So it is more displaced, cingulum is more displaced towards the distal side. The tooth it is not bilaterally, bilaterally symmetrical. It means both of the side, the mesial and the distal, they do not appear same. In fact, the tooth is tilted, the crown is tilted more towards the distal side. 
So that's why both of the sides, they, are, they do not look similar. So truth is not bilaterally symmetrical. So thank you very much for watching uh, this video. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and do comment and give us your feedback in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Again, thank you and stay blessed.